What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Trey Codes. As always, my name is Trey Hope, and I'm very grateful to see you again because it's been a little while since I've actually done any videos on my page. Uh, it's probably been a good four to five months, uh, but my goal is to actually get back on my consistent video content. So uh, I told myself that I would uh, release a video every week, so I'm gonna hold myself to that standard. Uh, and I felt the best way to jump back into the videos was to kind of go over something that I, you know, I was used to in the past, which was going over Flutter packages. So today's Flutter package I'll be discussing is app tracking transparency. And essentially what this package does is it allows you to prompt your users to ask them for permission to track their uses in the app. And I believe with the new iOS 14, um, all those apps, um, they require you to ask your users for this. So you can no longer upload apps to the App Store without first asking users for permission. So I've actually had um, someone reach out to me specifically and ask if I can go over this package. So uh, I thought it'd be a great place to start getting my, uh, my video content going again. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is add the app tracking transparency dependency to our pubspec.yaml file. Now, you can easily just go to the Flutter Packages website and copy and paste it into the pubspec.yaml file, but um, I've recently come across a command where you can just, um, just call Flutter pub add and then the name of the dependency and it'll automatically add uh, the most recent version. So we'll do that right now. We'll say flutter pub add app tracking transparency. Oops. All right, so as you can see here, it went and fetched the most recent version, which is 2.0.1. So now we've got the dependency in our project. So now what we need to do is we need to go over to the info.plist file um, in the iOS runner directory and add a key for NS user tracking usage description. And this will basically explain uh, what we're actually, what we're actually collecting user data for. So uh, we'll look for that right now. Let's go to the iOS directory runner info.playlist or plist. Uh, as you can see here, these are all the key, key value pairs in the file. So we'll go ahead, go to the bottom and add a new key. So we'll say key, NS user tracking usage description. I believe I spelled that right, okay. And now uh, we pass in the description, which is just a string value. And we'll just say this identifier will be used to deliver personalized ads to you. So this is the this is just the description um, from the Flutter Packages website. So this basically says this is the reason why we're collecting or why we're tracking usage in your app. It can be whatever you want. It just has to explain why you're tracking the information. So we'll save that. Cool. All right. So now we're ready to actually start coding. So the third step is to go into our main.dart function. And this is where we're actually going to um, set up the code to ask, can we track uh, your usage? So in the main function, this is where we'll actually call it. So we'll say, well, first we need to import it. I'm sorry, we need to import the package. So we'll go package uh, app tracking transparency slash app tracking trans transparency.dart all right there we go so now we can actually start using some of those classes so now we'll say final tracking status status equals await um, at tracking oops, transparency 
all right and then uh we'll call the method request tracking authorization so what this does is it will give us a tracking status object which basically explains has some information on there that lets you know um if the request has been approved or denied and then we can also use it um well we'll use a, another class the app tracking transparency class directly to actually ask for the information so um since it's in a wait we need to make this main function async otherwise it won't compile so uh, we'll do that so let's restart the app now and it should prompt us asking for uh the app tracking transparency so let's restart uh missing plugin session implementation um oh that's right when you add in a package during when the app is already running you have to completely restart it otherwise it uh it won't pick it up so we'll start it over completely run into bug let that work its magic for a second all right so we actually got the app running as you can see here it has now prompted us to uh track our activity across the companies apps and websites uh, so Patreon is pretty much just the project that I'm working on. I put all my demos in this folder. And so this is exactly what we wanted. So now, as you can see, uh, the result of this is going to be returned in the status object, but I don't want to approve or deny just yet. I want to, uh, add a few more layers to this. That way we can really see how it's supposed to operate. So, uh, with this status, I'm going to pass this into the, my app class. Uh, because I want to pretty much run a switch statement over it to, to determine what should be displayed in the background of the app once it's, once the value is selected. So uh, we'll say status status and then in my app we'll create a, style, a status variable final tracking status status all right and create the constructor and we'll just make it a required value status status. All right, so now we're passing the status into my app. And then in here, we're going to create a text variable displaying the status. Uh, so we'll say status text um, equals, we'll just make it nullable right now. That way we don't have to assign it. All right, so we'll say final string question mark. Now this is with null safe. So this is essentially a saying that this value may be null which is good. That means we don't have to assign it a value just yet. But now that I'm thinking about it, if we're using a switch statement, it'll have a default clause in there. So it'll automatically have to have a value. So we'll actually take that out and just make this like this. All right. So now I'm going to run a switch statement over the status and to get the status, we'll call widget dot status. Oops. All right. Um, is that right? Oh, no, we don't need that. I'm sorry. This is all we need. Okay. Uh, so then we'll go set up the first case. And the first case that we could have is uh, you can have authorized status. So if that's the case, then we'll set this status text to say uh, tracking status authorized. All right. Just like that. We'll go ahead and add the default now. So if there should never, it should never reach this default clause, but if it for some reason does, we'll just let the user know that they really messed up. You should not see this. And you shouldn't, so it's pretty accurate. All right, so then we'll just copy and paste some of these, uh, uh, the first clause again, maybe like three or four times. I think there's about four different clauses. Let's see. So another status that you could have is um, denied, uh, not determined, I believe. Yeah. And this is really just copy and paste. Oops, not my, not determined. Okay. And that should be a semicolon. Semicolon, you know what I mean. 
and then this would be let's see not supported all right and there's one more and we really won't even we're only going to hit like the first two i'm not sure how you even get not determined i guess you would have to close the window before you finish and not supported it would be if you're using a device that doesn't support it but for this example we're really we're really only going to hit the first two but i'll just have them in here just so you know that uh that they're possible values restricted all right and we gotta go back up here but not supported Okay, cool. All right, so, oops, why the app went black? Let's try that again. Hmm. Well, I think the app is still good. I think it just went black for some reason. But, uh, so now that we got the status text here, uh, after we select a value in the window, the status text will be updated within the switch statement. And then we'll just display that text in the body of the widget, uh, which is just a simple scaffold with an empty center. So we'll just say status text. All right. So let's go ahead and refresh. Now we'll go ahead and select a value for it. So we'll say ask app not to track. All right. So as you can see here, the status text was updated to tracking status denied. Now, the thing is, once you select a value, it only prompts you one time. So even if I refresh this and try to do it again, I already selected deny, so it's never gonna prompt me again. The only way to try this uh, process over is to completely delete the app. Let's see here. So we'll just hold this, remove app, delete app, delete. All right, and then we'll run it again. And once we run it again, it will prompt us again and we'll select a different value this time. We got our prompt open again. So this time, instead of saying ask app not to track, we will say allow. So as you can see, the tracking status has been authorized. So this is essentially how you use this package. Um, I believe that on all recent iOS apps, like I think it's a requirement now to prompt users for this at the beginning of your app. When I uploaded my app most recently without this feature, they denied it because they said it's required. So you essentially are required to ask people, hey, are we allowed to track your usage? Yes or no. Um, from there, it doesn't really matter what you do with it. Um, you can use their information to create ads with apps like Google Mob uh, Ad. I think it's no Google ad mob uh, or you can just pretty much prompt them and never do anything but you have to at least let them know that you asked them first um, and then on the back end is where you would set up things like Google ad mobs if you want to use the information so that's pretty much all there is to it all right so we covered app tracking transparency today and hopefully you learned something that you can apply to any flutter apps that you're currently working on there is two points that I want to cover first before I end the video. Uh, the first being, if you notice in the video, I only updated the info.plist file as far as rules and regulations go. And that's essentially because you don't need to modify anything on the Android end. It kind of works out of the box. Uh, they do mention on the website that you should be using the most recent version of Google Ad Mob, but that's uh, something that I'm not too familiar with, so I just encourage you to kind of do your own research on that, if that sounds like something you would need for your app. Uh, the second point is there's also another function that you can use with the app tracking transparency package, and that is a method called get advertising identifier. Uh, it essentially fetches a unique ID that's specific to your device in conjunction with Google App Mob. Uh, and again, I don't really know too much about that, but I'll just let you do your own research um, and hopefully that fits in perfectly for what you're trying to do. Um, other than that, um, if you learned anything, if this video was helpful, please let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, and be sure to let me know of any other videos that you would like to see me go over in the future, uh, whether it be Flutter packages or just even how to run through the Flutter app. Uh, my goal is to really make sure that I'm teaching it in the most efficient way possible. So um, if there's anything else, just reach out to me, let me know. But other than that, I hope you all have a good day and I will see you next time.